How's it going, Lewis? Eh, yeah, I suppose it's all right. <laughs> just, just all right. It's just okay. Yeah, like I have nothing really to be exceedingly happy about. Really, like at the same time, you know, not too depressing or anything. It's just shit's going. <laughs> it's it's just going. Yeah, that's that's a fair way to put it. So um, this is going to be a an interesting one, I guess. Well, it's going to be kind of like the first recording we did, I suppose, because uh, mm. we only really have one show to cover this week, ReZero, and then we have a bunch of time left over. So I think we'll cover stuff we've watched this season. Like I said, I, I said last time, I don't know if you watched anything this season other than what we covered, but I can cover stuff that I watched, at least briefly. And then uh, also a topic I wanted to talk about in general on this uh, on this one, too. To pass the time, basically. So, okay. um, that'll be cool, or a horrible disaster. I don't disaster. know the topic either, so it's a surprise. It's gonna be a surprise for all of us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna bring it up. Um, okay, cool. Also, also, before we start, before, uh, I was about to say before we start again, wow, um, I should mention, uh, assuming everything goes correctly, and nothing goes, like, horribly wrong on my end, editing-wise, uh, we finally have a background. Uh, oh. it was, it was contributed to us by, uh, I don't know what he wants me to call him, but he, uh, his username is Dorigon, uh, D-O-R-I-G-O-N. So, uh, assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, it should be the background from now on. It's pretty neat. I like it a yeah. lot. It's uh, my Twitter header now. <laughs> Lou is just stealing art all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's cool, and uh, we should just get right into things, because uh, even though we're only covering ReZero, we might just take it for granted and take way too long on it. So that's what true. did you think of uh, this week's episode of ReZero, Lewis? Um, yeah, it's good. Like, they, they seem to be going for, like, you know, well, you thought last week was dark. <laughs> Wait till you get to this part. Like, um, it was interesting. I, I might as well just, like, cover the the ending part because i think that's the most like you know topical thing that happened this episode really um but i i really liked it because in, in the way that it was kind of like um the entire situation was like introduced to you because it was just you acknowledge that like death was there like it, as soon as subaru opened that first door and saw like the couple like dead and draped over their table um it was obvious what was going on, but it was kind of cool seeing Subaru just, like, not acknowledging it. Like, he, his kind of, like, you know, um, I wouldn't really know what it was, what was it that what kind of, like, made him just kind of, uh, s just make it go all over his head. Maybe it's just, like, his determination to find Emilia and the rest of the people, or he just simply just didn't want to believe it so much that, like, he just didn't see it. But either way, it was a really cool touch that, like, you know, the entire, like, the menacing, like, scene of, like, the the ash pile, um, the patter, you saw, you heard that, like, Subaru's footsteps had, like, um, he, it sounded like he was just, like, pattering in blood and stuff like that, or, like, a pool of, of liquid anyways. Um, it was all a really, really cool scene, and, well, it's just me just complimenting the directing of three zero again um as for the rest of the uh, as for the rest of the episode i think it was a good uh sign of what's to come really like um we saw more of i guess super's obsession with i guess helping amelia now it's not really a case of like you know uh, him just wanting to do the greater good and it's literally just him trying to like you know please himself with uh, trying to aid Amelia. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, it's been a good episode. Um, things are really taking a turn for the, uh, I want to say dark, but if I say that, well, that's just opening another can of worms. So I'm saying things are looking kind of grim right now, and it's that seems I don't know with the opening it seems like that's going to be the the theme of this uh this arc I guess um yeah yeah I, I was 
it was a nice change to what we'd seen in like two episodes ago. So it's it's gonna be interesting this arc, and I but I enjoyed this episode regardless. Yeah, it's uh it's interesting to see Subaru's change. It was obviously we kind of saw it last episode, but it's at the point where he's like almost completely disregarding what Amelia wants because he's assuming he just knows better. So mm. it's it's kind of like that continuation of that, and like in a way, like he does know more because of his ability, but at the same time, like he's almost like taking it for granted and like lording it over everyone else. Like, of course I know better because of this. Like, there's no way you could ever know better no matter what. So we're seeing that that uh, aspect of his personality come out, which is obviously going to be a thing for this arc. And uh, mm. the fact that he's taking, like, even the power itself for granted a bit. Like, I honestly, like, I was actually expecting after he was, like, thinking about how, you know, if shit went wrong and his power would reset. Like, I was expecting him to just, right during his, like, brunch or tea time or whatever it was with Krush, we got to see a bit more of. Uh, yeah. I was going to just like jump off the ledge, like right there <laughs> because he was just like, Oh, I have this ability. I can just reset everything. Fuck it. Um, but it's interesting to note that like a lot of time has passed. Like it's been established that since the last episode where the whole confrontation with Amelia happened, like quite a lot of time has passed. Like he was training and like recovering at the one mansion and then they were on the way to the castle and they kept emphasizing how much time had passed a lot. So I feel like it's going to be that thing that we kind of mentioned before where he will eventually reset because that's the main gimmick of the story, but it's going to mm. be after their confrontation. So he can't like take back what he said. So he's going to have to try and repair things after the fact, which I think is probably better for his character rather than just being able to reset whatever the fuck. I mean, yeah. it's kind of hard with Subaru's character because you can use things that he knows that other people don't to advance his character. But as far as his relationships with other people... You can't really do that since he's the only one that has the the ability. So that's kind of smart on uh, the writer's behalf of that's where this goes, that he can't take back his mistake. So uh, we see that. And then we also see foreshadowing of dark shit to come, obviously, with the, mm. the masked fuckers, who were very clearly the same people who burned down Rem and Ram's village. They looked almost exactly the same. So that was coming back into the thing. Uh, I had a feeling that they weren't just going to be a one-off thing. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, the more interesting thing about how they just straight up bowed him and then fucking sonicked off. So, <laughs> that was interesting. Also interesting was the sound during that. Like, there was the initial, like, huh, oh, kind of sound, like, when they appear, like, the shock yeah. kind of sound effect. But then after they're, like, around him, like, nothing's happening. Like, the sound is just silent. And which was, I, th I think, was a nice touch. Because, like, creepy music has its place to, like, establish tone. But in a lot of times, like, when something's, like, visually kind of creepy, like, you don't really need to do anything sound-wise. It almost shouldn't. Like, it just, it, it adds to the creepiness by having no sound playing at all, which it did. Because they bowed to him, and then they fucking, you know, like I said, they sonicked off, and then, the, like, the fucking creepy laugh track they had plays, which is, like, ReZero's version of, like, Ahaha.Wav from fucking Umineko. <laughs> so, um, so that was creepy. Uh, and then we saw that, uh... Blue got fucked up. I, I remembered which one was which before, but now I've already forgotten who which one's Rem and which one's Ram. It's Ram, right? I usually... Yeah. The way I remembered before is that Rem isn't red because that would be too easy because it's only one letter off. Oh, yeah. But yeah. uh, that that's how I was remembering it before, but uh, <laughs> I forgot. Um, So we see that she's fucking, like, murdered. So now the question is what happened in the mansion, which I'm sure we'll find out next episode. Um... It'll be interesting because obviously within the mansion, like there's a, there's a ram or ram or fuck. I don't remember. So Ram. <laughs> Ram's in the mansion. She's probably dead because she's weaker than Rem. Uh, she has wind magic, but at Wait, the same what? time, like she doesn't have her horn. So oh, yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, then we have but then we also have Roosevelt and then Beatrice is in the mansion, too. So there's a lot of powerful people in the mansion also. And it'll be mm. interesting to see what the fuck happened in there. To see if they got killed or maybe they were, like, away for some reason or whatever. So, we, we're just getting, like, the inklings of the bigger picture right now. Uh, to see what's going on with this arc even now. And, um, I think you mentioned the opening briefly. We got, a uh, we, we finally got the opening this episode. Uh, but a lot mm. of it seemed to be just, like, footage from the show itself. Which makes me wonder if, like, uh, that's the actual footage they're using. Or if it's just not finished yet. 
because uh, it was seemed like it was a mix of like original work for the opening and then like other parts of it were like very clearly like clips from the show. So mm. usually when an opening has clips from the show, it's they're just placeholders because they're working on the opening still. Um, with the level of production value ReZero has, I wouldn't be surprised if they still hadn't finished the opening yet. So it's possible. Or maybe they like are purposely not showing certain scenes because they're going to wait for the, yeah, uh, the time thinking. loop to establish and then they'll implement the full opening. So who really knows? Um, mm. I like the opening though. I'm, I'm glad it's not shit. So many shows have great first <laughs> openings and then crappy second ones. So I'm glad this one doesn't suck. So yeah. that's yeah. good. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's that, that was the episode. It, it's basically, I mean, all the episodes so far have been like, ooh, establishing the arc. But this one's like the first one that's really like getting into the meat of it, where it's like mm. still teasing things to come. But at the same time, like the foot's like in the door now. So whereas every, all the other ones, I guess, if I were to continue the analogy, were more like knocking on the door. Now we've actually got the foot in the door and the next episode will probably go full on in. So yeah, yeah. We'll just make that door a little bit more jar. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, there's... I don't know. Like, cause I, I'm also kind of wondering how, um, how important Emilia is going to be for this arc as well, because uh, for things to come, because like, I feel like the opening put a lot of importance on Rem, and I feel like she's going to be a hell of a lot more prominent uh, in this arc than she was in the first one. So it's going to be interesting to see how um, she fares, really. Um, but uh, Amelia seems to probably be, uh, uh, I don't know, the dungeon, the, like, uh, how would I describe this? You know, like the sort of like princess locked away in a, a long Long, blah, blah, lost awakened dungeon sort of thing like she's just kind of like um trapped away but it's still kind of prominent i guess i don't know how they're gonna like really do her this episode uh this arc because like all i've really got based on is the opening which kind of like hints at her being a target of witch hands i don't know where they're coming from but she's gonna be a target and i guess emil and Subaru's gonna be the dude just to go up and save her out of whose own will. Maybe out of his own will and just be like But it's gonna be kinda of interesting to see who's that kind of like serving. Is he gonna be serving his own ego there or is he actually gonna try and do it out of Emilia's own uh wishes, maybe? I don't know. But either way it's gonna be interesting to see how Amelia actually kind of like responds to everything this arc because Obviously, she we're learning a lot more with how the entire world sees her, and now she's yeah. actually in the middle of a uh, election, I guess, um, political election. So it's going to be interesting just to see how um, how different she's going to be this this arc because, like, in the first arc, she was very much like. Uh, you know, just like that kind of like good friend to Subaru, always loving, always caring, blah blah blah. While he was there, kind of like murd getting murdered time and time again, and Amelia was kind of there acting as the kind of support for him. Um, and now that she isn't there, that's obviously going to affect Subaru in the long run. But it's also going to be kind of strange for Amelia as well, because like. Maybe it's just me thinking that, like, oh, it's going to be weird seeing her without Subaru and not acting as a supportive role, but um, I'm interested just to see how she fares in this arc as well. Yeah, it's, it's something you mentioned it, but uh, the opening makes it seem like Amelia is definitely, like, the primary target of whatever's going on in this arc, which yeah. is uh, interesting because if you remember the previous arcs, Amelia was never actually the main target. Like, in the first one, she only really got killed when she showed up at the storehouse. She just happened to cross paths with the uh, crazy psycho spider bitch. So, like, <laughs> it was largely just coincidence. Like, it's not like she was actively trying to kill Amelia or anything. She was mainly trying to get the insignia. So, there was that. And then Amelia didn't really die at all in the second arc. Like, she was just kind of around. She wasn't really the focus of anything. She was there to help out Subaru and notice, like, he was going through some shit and stuff like that. But she was never, like, targeted for, like, being killed. 
Whereas in this arc, it seems like this is almost like she is directly being attacked. So it's an interesting mm. difference, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, something else I almost forgot to mention, uh, a little bit that I liked in the episode was, um, can't remember his name because we've only known him for like an episode and a half, but uh, the other uh, Vanastrea dude, the the old guy who, who serves with Krush, Um Oh, yeah. I liked his little bit where he was training with Subaru and after Subaru has the little thing where he's like, Oh yeah, I can reset time. Uh, he's like, wants to train with him and he's just like refuses oh, yeah. to train with Subaru because he makes the comment. He's like the point of, you know, the training is to make someone stronger. There's no point if there's no desire to get stronger at all, which was mm. really clever because like that was the point with Subaru's character at that point. It's like at that point he had decided like it didn't matter if it got stronger because he can reset time. So it didn't really matter to him. Like almost like it's almost like this timeline didn't even matter to him anymore. So like the, the, the old dude picking up on that and being like, well, there's no point in me training you. Cause it seems like you don't actually give a shit, uh, yeah. was a nice touch. So I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of made me almost think that there's something going on with the old dude. Maybe like he, Obviously, there was a sort of thing with him being the like the death blade or whatever they called him in the last episode, but it, it made me kind of feel like he's onto Subaru. Like he kind of is aware of what um, Subaru's thing is. Like he obviously people are able to sense Ram and Ram were able to sense the witches sent off him. Maybe this old dude who's supposed to be this like you know death blade super duper guy is able to go that extra step further with Subaru and understand his wishes uh, thing or whatever in him. Um, it'd be kind of an interesting thing though if that's actually true or not. It probably isn't. I'm probably just making shit up and it's probably just like him just thinking oh well this guy doesn't show any is showing no enthusiasm blah 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 I'm just going to head home and whatever. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how I feel like that he was definitely introduced in a way that it's going to make him a lot more prominent, and I feel like the way he's going to be more prominent is that he kind of sees what's going on with Subaru. I don't know how they're going to legitimize that, but eh, whatever. I have trust in the dude. Uh, I mean, the, the author when I say the dude. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting scene. I actually kind of forgot about that, because it, it, it was kind of cool how, like, you know, it was just the same line every time, you know, it was like, let's just call it for today. Um, and each time it was just like, you saw Subaru was willing to get up. Like the first time he was down and out. So it was kind of understandable. Second time, I think he just kind of like got up and it was just like, let's just call it for today. And third time he just like landed on his feet. So it was kind of interesting to see that. That's how he kind of developed into it. But, um, what else? But yeah, it was, that was a, a very interesting segment that just kind of brushed over my head more than anything yeah yeah it's hard to say like it, it's possible that he could be observant to the point where he actually figures out what's going on with Subaru but at the same time it's also been established that he's just very observant like when he first met Subaru he mentioned something about him having the eyes of someone who'd seen death a lot so oh yeah it's possible it's possible he could piece it together but it's also possible that he's just one of those kinds of characters that's you know He's old and aged and seen some things so he can, like, notice things in other people that other people don't tend to. So, yeah, it's hard to say really where they're going to go with that, but uh, I'm sure we'll find out. He seems like he's going to be, well, honestly, probably most of the political candidates are going to be relevant this arc. So we'll see what happens with all mm. of them, really. Um, Was that it for this episode? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, we pretty much covered that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the only episode we had to cover this week because everything else we covered finished airing. So <laughs> that was easy. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess next we should do uh, the bit of a free for all topic that uh, I was thinking about discussing to pass the time on this one, which is uh, related to ReZero because I look around a lot for thoughts on ReZero because I, it's a show that I actually want to get popular for once. Like it's one that I feel like would actually, well, Anything that gets a really large, annoying fan base can have uh, problems, but yeah. uh, I feel like ReZero is good to the point where like it deserves the attention, and I'm willing to risk it, so I like seeing what people are saying about it. And uh, at first, 
the original topic I wanted to go over was because I noticed that people weren't uh, uh, either watching it or they didn't like it. And a lot of it was passing it off because of it being based on a light novel, which was mm. like kind of like a silly thing to do. So because you should grade stuff, obviously, based on what it actually does rather than whatever medium it is. Um, but that seemed like it was too like simple of a topic in a way. And it's a lot, not like it convince anyone anyways. So instead I noticed something else that was a common complaint that people who either largely people who are watching the show, but didn't like rather than people who weren't watching the show at all, I was more interested in the people who did watch it, but didn't like it because I feel like the show was, you know, pretty good at showing off like it's, you know, chops. Like, even in the first episode, it's good at hinting at things to come. So I feel like, you know, even if you're not, you're, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The opposite of uh, pessimistic. Even people who are pessimistic can kind of, like, see, you know, the positive linings going on through it. But um, there are some people who didn't like it. And I noticed a common complaint. I mean, there's a couple. But one that I noticed um, that I was going through was also one that I noticed when before Zero Time Dilemma came out. I was looking up talks on the previous Zero Escape games. People were talking about them. And it was a, a similar complaint I saw people give Virtue's Last Reward, which is a game we both really like. So... Obviously, I'm beating around the bush a lot. The The thing that people are saying about both is that they're slow. And I don't quite understand why they think that, because it, it makes me wonder what makes people call a show slow. Because a lot of the times, people say, like, like the biggest thing they give for ReZero is, like, uh, I notice a lot of people who don't care much for it say, like, when pe new people are picking it up, they say, uh, when they get to the second arc, they say, oh, get ready for 10 episodes in the same mansion. But I don't get how that automatically makes the pacing slow because, like, things happen. Like, it's not like they're meandering around the mansion doing fucking nothing. Like, you can have an entire show take place in one setting. A lot of shows entirely are based on taking place in one setting. And I guess maybe they'll just blanket all of them as slow-paced, but... That seems, like, weird to me. Like, as long as things are happening and, like, you're getting, like, because the, the thing with ReZero is you get a lot out of the show. Like, even when, you know, you're not getting directly information told to you, like, you're getting hints of things to come. Like, it's almost like a mystery story. Like, it's giving you hints and you, like, think about things and you piece them together and you think about what's going on and how everything links together. And I feel like people who say the show is slow are people who just aren't invested like, they're not even trying. It's kind of like something that was covered in Newman Echo. Like, there's no point in really reading a mystery story if you're not even going to try to figure it out. So, it's... I guess that's where they're getting the slow com complaints from, I, I guess? But it just... It, 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 how do I put this? It, it put the question in my mind of what makes a slow show for somebody. Because for me, it's a show where I don't care how many settings there are. If nothing's really happening in the show, if I'm not getting any... I need to get things from the show, whether it's speculation or character development or interactions or something telling me that I should care, something to keep me engaged. Like, I, I just need to be engaged. If I'm not engaged, then it's a slow show. Like, obviously, something like Flying Witch last season is a slow show. Not that that makes it a bad thing, but, like, even the characters talk fucking slow in that compared to other shows. Like... It feels like giving ReZero the label of a slow show just because it takes place in one setting. And also, people say it's slow because of the time looping. So, like, people have actually said, like, oh, it's the same... I don't want to watch the same chunk of time over and over again. And it's like, but different things happen every time. You learn new stuff. It's just... I don't know. It was confusing to me. I, I So I guess I wanted to bring up the topic of, like, what what makes a show slow, Lewis? Uh, well, hmm. Okay, well, the way I see it is that when you take a show, let's say, for example, Hunter Hunter 2011, in the first 20 or I think it's like episode, up until episode 24 or something, there is always seems to be a change of scenery or a change of, I wouldn't say setting, but a change of scenery nonetheless. So a location is changed in the first uh, in every uh, four to five episodes, so to speak. Um, that happens every four to five episodes in the first 20-something episodes. A lot of people claim that uh, Hunter Hunter has terrific uh, 
pacing and it's very um, fast paced and it's really it feels like there's like no boring or drawn out moment within that show and I think that the entire changing of setting uh, I mean location really aids to that um, because you know way it was like was like in Hunter Hunter was like the first four episodes or something. I think it wasn't four episodes with the first, of it, but it was like you know you had like the running section and then they were on the boat and then they went to like uh, the forest and they went to the mansion. Like there was a lot of changes of of scenery that um w- came about uh, that really helped to kind of give that kind of placebo effect of a fast a fast fastness is probably the best way to put it. A fast fastness. Um, but yeah, but like, and so you have stuff like ReZero and Virtue's Last Reward where, yeah, there are things happening and yeah, like there are progressions within characters and developments within the plot uh, in terms of like you actually learning a lot more about characters. But, um, since everything is kind of like rooted in the same place for a long what seems to be a long period of time it it just feels like the entire thing is just drawn out to people not me not me i feel like you know re-zero isn't rushed at all i mean slow at all i mean um and it's kind of further that Uh, with re-zero and virtuous last ward you also have the factor that they also go back in time like they they kind of jump back to a certain point to progress, so to speak. Um, now, the thing is, that kind of... <laughs> within some people, I guess, it kind of adds to the, to the entire, oh, nothing's happening, we're just going back to the same certain point in time. What's the point of watching this when, you know, there's no physical linear progression of time when we're just going back? So... That kind of eats a slow thing. Like, we've talked about this. Like, there's always a change within each jump back within ReZero. Um, there's always, like, a certain uh, uh, change of character. Like, either, like, Subaru's a lot more determined this time around, or he's trying to, just, like, learn some things. There's always, like, something different about each arc or each jump that kind of makes it interesting. Yet, I guess the mentality of it all is that. Um, is that it's just, it's just, it's just like it's just kind of rooted in the same location it just kind of like it, 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 I guess it gives the feeling of it just like nothing's happening I guess I, yeah I, I guess that's that's my point I, um. I well yeah but the, the thing is like should a, a show's pacing be determined by by its setting like d- should it a show that changes setting every episode is it inherently a well-paced or fast-paced show like a, a show can change settings all the time for all at once but if the characters are talking about the same shit every time and nothing new is being established like wouldn't that still be a slow show which is why i don't understand with ReZero because yeah like the same chunks of time are repeating but it doesn't repeat itself. I mean, there's a little bit of repetition in the very first loop because Subaru doesn't know what's going on, but he still dies in different ways each time. And then once you know what's going on, it skips all the other shit. Like, Subaru doesn't have to find his way to the junk house after the first time because he knows where it is, so he just immediately goes there. Like, we, we skip all the stuff we already know on the time loops. And, of course, the setting's gonna be the same because of t- time loops, because that's just how the fucking time loops work. Like, of course you're gonna be in the same setting. But I feel like because the different things are happening, like... Like I said before, it almost feels like people who say ReZero's pacing is slow are people who aren't trying to get anything out of it. Like, they're just kind of n- passively absorbing the show, which I guess I can't say is, like, a wrong way to watch something. But with something like ReZero, which is very clearly wants you to, like, connect the dots on things on your own and, like, make, you know, theories at the very least of, like, you know, what everything means. Like, it gives you the information to do that, and so it clearly wants you to do something with that information. Like, I feel like calling the show slow is just because people aren't even doing that. And I can't say it's necessarily watching the show wrong or anything, but 
it's, it's almost like it's doing the show a disservice and it's almost being like misleading. Like I feel like two people could watch ReZero and have completely different opinions on the pacing because there's no like strict guideline for what it means for a show's pacing to be slow, which is like the problem. Like we, we, we need to nail down in like a critical viewpoint, like what determines a show being slow? What determines a show not being slow? Like, like I said before, for me, a show that's slow is one that doesn't like, it doesn't establish things to involve your engagement and engagement doesn't have to be like theory craft or anything like that. It can even just be emotional investment. But so my example before was like something like Flying Witch, like Flying Witch is slow, but it's supposed to be slow at the same time. I'm not saying it's a bad show because it's slow. I'm just trying to establish what it means for a show to be have a slow pace, which is the 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 fact that Flying Witch, like not a lot much happens in it. Like even like I mentioned before, the characters even talk slow in it. Like it's it's very meant to be like a leisurely paced slow like that. It's a perfect example of what it's a slow show is. It's not because it's just in the same city all the time. It's because the characters don't really do much. Like each arc has its own, or not necessarily arc, but each episode or little story has its own little thing going for it. But at the pacing in which they go through it is like really slow. Like there are lots of times where like you can just kind of sit back and watch things happen. You don't really have to think about anything. You don't really have, you know, emotional investment. You're just kind of passively absorbing the information, which is why I mentioned before that I think re-zero people uh, who watch it and say the pacing is slow are people just passively watching the show because that way they don't have that engagement, which is why the pacing feels slow to them because they're not really trying to be engaged. Like, I feel like almost any show can be slow paced if you don't have the engagement. Like, I'm sure a lot of, like, a good one that's airing this season is, like, the, uh, the Planetarian OVA, which is, like, five episodes long or something. Like, I'm sure a lot of people like the first episode to bring, it's, like, old school, like, key shit. Like, people will like that kind of stuff. They like the uh, atmosphere and, like, the idea of what it's going for. But I was fucking bored the entire time because I had no engagement. So everything felt really slow to me. Like, when you're bored, things feel slower. Like, you'll pay more attention to the timer on, like, an episode. Like, when the fuck does this end? So it's, it's, pacing has nothing to do with like setting or honestly really even what the characters are doing. It's all about your engagement. So whether the characters are doing things that like, or the story's doing things to make you like make theories up or like, you know, to try and connect the dots on certain things on your own, or you just, you just feel emotions about what's going on. Like that's what really feels like it determines the pacing of a show, whether it's slow or not. But that's just my theoretical observation. What what would what would you say is it is, Lewis? Well, like yeah, obviously, your level of immersion is going to affect the um, I guess rate of how the how fast the show is going for you. Because like, if you're not going to if you're not going to give a shit about a show, it's going to like drag out for as long as it will really like when you're genuinely invested in something and you you have that sort of like uh attachment to the show as well like yeah it, it it's going to like go fast for you like i remember watching uh, what was that show called uh kawaii so like boku no uh 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 fuck 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 what's it called boku wa uh, no it was about a show where a guy moved into, like, a household, like, uh, and they were, like, you know, there was that quiet chick that loved books. Apparently, she was the main love interest. Uh, the dude was a masochistic pervert. The other lady was a uh, alcoholic. Uh, and then there was the girl that w wore a bunch of makeup. Like, that show. that Those episodes went so goddamn quick for me. Like... Uh, despite being a pretty goddamn low key show, like it's it's it had no real like you know action pieces like no gunplay or choreographed scenes. It was literally just a comedy show, a nice slow paced, uh, uh just a slice of life, I guess. Really, <laughs> that was just it, it was nice. The the little romance flirts here and there, the uh little banter between all the residents within the house. Um, like, it, it was, it was just a very enjoyable show to watch, and, like, it, it was very, very easy to watch, because, like, the show <laughs> just appealed to me, like, you know, 
in this it's comedy appeal to me. It was just a very entertaining show to watch, and those episodes just went by. However, it'd be easy to see how like the shows went slow because it's it's a slice of life, and shows like Nya Nya and Biori and uh. Uh, who had another example? Another example would be nice. Um, let's just stick Nani on Biori for time being. Oh, Tanaka Kun, that's the show from this season. Yeah, yeah. Shows like that, um, that are intentionally slow paced, and you really have to, like, be there to enjoy. Like, you really gotta get that sort of, like, I will enjoy this. Nothing will stop me from enjoying this sort of attitude going towards it. The sort of attitude I had with. Uh, how I saw. I, I think that's the show what it's called. Um, so you gotta have that attitude going into it, otherwise the show is going to drag. When the show does tend to be intentionally slow, like Nya Nya Biori, it does have that effect. And, and like, if it's intentionally slow and, like, you're not on board with it, so to speak, like, you're not really... You're just kind of like a neutral, I guess. You're not really, like, going to reach out for it, so to speak. Like, you're going to have that sort of dragging sensation uh throughout the entire show um but uh god what the fuck else what was i saying but in terms of sh of shows that uh god this would have been nice if i actually planned this shit out it would have been nice if you actually told me about like this fucking topic then you know i would have had like a little 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 few bullet points beside me <laughs> no this yeah. is more fun uh, but um what was I saying? But then there are shows which, you know, they 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 they, they can be fast paced, but have no level of immersion. Like I say, like those action sequences within a uh, common area. I guess like the show was wasn't necessarily boring. Like it was a bad show, but like it wasn't. I wasn't like. Well, during the action sequences, anyways, I wasn't necessarily bored. I wasn't, like, you know, dozing off or anything. Like, I was still, you know, entertained by it all. So, really, all it, uh, all it boils down to is either, I guess, you know, the level of immersion you got or how much flippy shit they got in the show. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean... I get it, like, the idea that something is slow because there's not, like, big action pieces or something like that in it. Like, obviously, no one's gonna say Cabinary is a slow show. But the problem is, like, it's it's hard to nail something down with just that because I wouldn't say ReZero is a slow show at all. And, I mean, it, it it's not necessarily a high octane, but there are, like, a lot of things that happen, like, people get killed and shit. So, obviously, there are big moments, but at the same time, like, in just in general, I wouldn't really say that ReZero is a slow show, so I, I'm kind of reluctant to say that just simply, like, big action pieces or, like, big events like that solely determine the pacing of a show. So it, it's really hard. And then you have, obviously, shows like Nononbiori and Flying Witch, which are very obviously, like, slow, but are, like, meant to be slow. So it's it's, like, it's hard to not only determine what makes a show slow but also like whether it's going for that and whether it's like fine for it to do that like maybe just based on the subject matter like it's a matter of what the show's going for like I feel like if a show's going for a slow pace like it's hard to really say that as a negative thing despite the negative connotation of you know something being slow which is why I feel like I, I almost want to stop calling shows like Flying Witch slow paced I want to call them more just like leisurely paced which has a bit more of a positive connotation to it because it's trying to go for, like, not anything crazy. Um, because it's not like a slow pace determines a show entirely negatively. Because that's the problem, is, like, slow pacing is thrown around as a negative, which is being thrown around by the people who don't enjoy ReZero that much, as they say the pacing is, like, so slow. And that's the problem that I have, is, like, it, it doesn't feel like... I feel like... I mean, obviously, pacing is largely... Well, I want to say pacing subjective, but then obviously the, the flying witch comes back to mind. And it's like, well, that's obviously slow. Like, almost no one would disagree with that. So it's, again, it's really hard to nail down because I don't think ReZero is slow at all. I get a lot out of every single episode. Almost every conversation, I get something out of what they're saying and, like, how it connects to everything else and things to possibly come. 
So when people are saying it's slow and they largely just say it's because of the setting, like I don't, I don't get it. Like, I feel like it's impossible, maybe, perhaps this is too ambitious to have guidelines for what makes a show slow or not, but I feel like just purely even on a subjective level, like purely basing a pacing based on like a setting seems silly. Like it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, it's, how do I put this? It's very, very, very hard. <laughs> to determine, like, obviously you mentioned it and I'm mentioning it too, is that, like, it is a, a lot of it has to do with subjectivity because a lot of it has to do with the immersion and how much you're engaged, uh, which was said before. But I, at the same time, like, there's, again, always go back to Flying Witch and Nonobiori and those shows that are meant to be slow. So it's almost like they're, they're very, there's obviously a way to I guess there's a difference between intentional slow pace and unintentional slow pace. And that's what we're trying to kind of get at here. Like there are shows that aim to have that slow pace to them, which are the things that I'm now calling leisurely paced. But then there are the shows that like don't intend to be slow paced, but come across as slow paced. But then the problem with those is like when something is like unintentionally or like not achieving what it's trying to do, that's when the subjectivity comes in. It's like a lot of people are going to disagree on whether a show accomplishes what it does or not. We had fucking Cabinary already. A lot of people liked it as a smart, you know, not a smart, but a, a fun popcorn flick. And then a lot of other people thought it was, like, just complete shit. Like, even if it was, you know, meant to be a popcorn flick, it even failed on that level. So it's always subjectivity when it comes to whether a show accomplishes, accomplishes what it's trying to do or not. It's just, like... I guess the point I'm trying to make is that, like, although it's very hard just on, you know, unscripted ramblings to try and nail down what m can determine the pacing of a show somewhat objectively, it's, it's, um, it, it's still silly to judge it based on setting alone and, like, the time loop alone. Like, I feel like different things happening is really all that matters as far as, like, determining whether a pacing is slow or not. Like, yeah, there are the time loops, but, like, different shit happens each time and you learn new things. So, like, that inherently doesn't make the pacing slow just because it's the same chunk of time in the same setting. Like, again, I, I feel like it may be a general viewer versus a critical thing, though. Like, obviously, a critical watcher is going to take more out of in each individual scene than someone who's just watching, purely absorbing a finished product and not really thinking about the construction of it all. So, like, obviously, you know... There will be exceptions, but in general, a critical viewer is going to take more out of each conversation. So they're the ones paying attention to how each conversation implies something more and hints at things over, you know, some other direction and stuff like that. And there's, there's, it's not entirely the case with Three Zero. Like, I'm actually really happy with how the general audience even is having a lot of fun with, like, you know, coming up with ideas with what's going on in the show based on everything that's happening, which is super cool to see. Um, but it's... I feel like we're just going in circles, really. It's just, a lot of it seems to be engagement and immersion. And can, can we, I guess maybe we should just wrap it up with, is it silly to base the pacing of a show purely on its setting? Uh, well, no. Because, like, you have to be pretty goddamn, like, superficial just to kind of, like, like there are some things which you, that should not be like judged in the overall scheme of things. I feel so like something like I guess the animation. It's same thing as bleh, criticizing that because like in the end that's not like giving to like you know the overall writing of it. But when it comes to actual scenario or I mean setting, it's more of the kind of. <laughs> appeal there's like a natural appeal to it that kind of like is going to entice a lot of people and it's also going to kind of like not uh welcome in a lot of people as well so it, it it's a double edged blade really uh, i guess is probably the best way to put it so um in regards to setting like you're going to like it or you're not i feel so it's really a matter of a yes no question rather than a sort of like I will critique this sort of question. So uh 
no, no. I'm yeah, no. Yeah, no. That's my <laughs> that's my answer. No, it's not fair to judge something based on just the setting. Just the setting, nah. Because like, there are things you can do which like within like giving like if you're given like a goddamn template, you can go a mile or you go an inch with it. Like, it doesn't really matter where your actual story takes place as long as the story itself is good. Like, I guess Sword Online is a prime example of this. Great setting, not so great show. Uh, And the same goes for a lot of shows. Like, there are plenty of bad settings. I don't know, like, high schools, for example. Yeah, we got some good shows out of that. So, like, it's all very... I guess subjective, really. If something is going to appeal you, appeal to you, setting wise, it's obviously going to like jump out at you. If on the same why, on the same token, if you want to like see another high school drama and like you're sick of the all of them, then like it's not going to appeal to you. So it's really a matter of having your tastes not align with the actual setting, rather than the actual having your well, the actual show being bad, if you if you get me, you know. Yeah, I I, I get it, and you kind of mentioned it before, but animation even ties into like the pacing of something too. Like, the more motion a show has, the more it feels like things are happening, even if it's just a conversation. Like, obviously, a low budget show where there's barely any you know movement with the characters is gonna feel slower than one where like characters are animated as they talk. So there's a lot that goes into determining the pacing of a show. I think I think I just brought it up because like I I saw people complaining about the slow pacing of it just based on like the repeated or the the same setting for a lot of episodes and this is completely unfair of me to say but I feel like those are the people that went in with predetermined bias maybe because it was based on a light novel but I feel like it was just something that's like like if they stopped and thought about basing the pacing of a show just based on the setting like maybe on like a quick thought it made sense but when you actually think mm. about it, like purely basing the pacing of a show because it's in the same place is really silly when you think about it because of how many things can actually happen. I mean, and maybe they're just simplified. Maybe like they just didn't want to take the time to like make the more detailed argument about why it was slow and it's not actually the repeated setting or whatever. Who really knows? It was just a topic that I thought was interesting to discuss. And although we really didn't go anywhere because of course we talked in circles um yeah. it was still something interesting to go over at least yeah but uh yeah yeah that'll i think that that's a good wrap up to that discussion um mm-hmm. we have a tiny bit of time left did you watch anything this season besides what we covered lewis uh like i watched first episode of kuma no first two episodes of kumi miko even um what else? What else? What else? Uh, I didn't obviously watch the entire show through. That'd be too much work. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like there was something else. Like there has to be something else. You don't even remember? That's probably like enough reason to like say that I probably didn't watch anything. Like, <laughs> hmm. Mm, yeah, no. I'm, I'm going to say no. And if you, like, <laughs> say something that, like, I probably did watch, I'll be able to chime in. But yeah, no. Okay. Well, I don't have time to go over everything I watched. I can give brief comments on everything. But just to, like, list off the things that I watched, other than uh, the stuff we covered, and this is only the stuff that actually ended, uh, I watched Space Patrol Luluko, Ushi Odotora, Big Order, Mayoga, Kizniver, Kumamiko, Joker Game, Second Season of Assassination Classroom, and Happy and Flying Witch. So, a lot of shows. I watch a lot of shows each season. This is probably like some of the fewest I've watched in season, to be honest. Like, even including the shows that didn't finish, which is like impressive. Nerd. Maybe next. <laughs> hey, man, you used to watch more than me. That's true dark days but uh you gave me shit for it too you're always like oh you're five shows behind me real god yeah you'll never be level 27 weave (laughs) and now you can watch you barely watch anything yeah Uh, yeah it happens you'll be back god no (laughs) 
At least you aren't like before where you refuse to drop anything. Yeah, yeah, that was, oh, mama. <laughs> that was hell. <laughs> like, I, I stayed through some real boring shit. It wasn't even shows I hated. It was the boring shows, which was the worst. Like, shows I hated, I could, like, have that sort of, like, passion at instead of just be like, oh, God, this is so shit. I can't believe I'm watching this. But boring shows was the worst because it was just like, it's only been five minutes, but it feels like it's been two hours. Kill me now. So that was the worst part. That's why I'm saying you'll be back, though, because you you had all of that, like, shows you watched a ton each season and you refused to drop anything. Mm. And just like the housing market in the U.S., you crashed, man. Like, <laughs> it just, it came to a bubble and it popped. So now you're yeah. in, like, the, like, you know, relapse period where you're just kind of, like, taking it easy. You'll be back yeah. and in more of, a, like, calm, kind of, like, picking up a few shows, but you're willing to drop the stuff that you don't really care for. It'll be yeah. a nice, a nice, like, After Effects sort of deal. That's 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 the weeb hope. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. I I don't really I don't know what to say about the shows I watched. Like Space Patrol Lulico was a short. It was lots of fun. It was Trigger being silly again. Um. They had an entire four episodes where it was like a crossover with shows they've already done before, which was great. The Killer Kill one was hilarious. Um. Like it just descended into madness at the end. It was great. Um. There was Ushio Totoro, which, like, I enjoyed it, but, like, I didn't care much for the second season, to be honest. Like, it felt like they kept introducing new shit right at the end, and it was like, what the fuck uh... is this? And then, uh, by the end, I was just like, can this just end already? It's been 37 episodes. Just, <laughs> just end it already. Yeah. Shame, really. I actually yeah. watched, like, the first three episodes of season one of Ushu Tora and it had a really cool like classical feel to it that was pretty interesting I liked it I mean it wasn't based on a 90s manga so that yeah, makes sense yeah. I mean it was it was solid it just it felt like it dragged on a bit too long and then when it was introducing random like shit that was like new and like the ending bits it was like oh god like it just oh. it just kind of was like can you just end now instead of introducing more things please shame so the pacing mm. just felt kind of wonky in the last bit um there was Big Order, which, Jesus Christ, the less said about Big Order, the better. Um, <laughs> if that doesn't top my worst of the year list, I'll be fucking amazed. Um, <laughs> Big Order was a train wreck in all of the worst possible ways, but also some of the best possible ways, in a way. It, it was just a complete mess. Like, the animation was a joke. Somehow it got worse from Future Diary. I don't know how that even was possible. Um, the, the plot was completely nonsensical half the time. It just, like, random shit needed to happen, so it happened. There's just the directing itself with, like, even the, including the animation budget, I guess, was, like, just a complete shit show. Like, characters were teleporting all over the place. Like, characters would be in one place doing one thing, and then literally the next shot without establishing the scene at all would be them doing completely something different. Like, there was, like, no sense to the directing at all. It was... Just a complete mess. It was all over the place. It it was the dumbest thing you could possibly watch. And unfortunately, not always in the entertaining kind of dumb way. Huh. So that was a thing. There was also my yoga, which was um, also arguably dumb, but possibly in a more intentional way. Uh, it's kind of hard to really nail down my yoga because half the time it feels like it's intentionally being stupid and half the time it feels like it's unintentionally being stupid. Kind of like Big Order in that regard, but at least its production values aren't complete garbage. Um, it was weird and uh, kind of like the, the easiest comparison is what the director's done before with another. Like the directing is just weird. Like I think he uh. said in an interview at some point that like, he likes to combine comedy with, like, horror because it's kind of, like, a similar reaction in a way. Um, which is an interesting thought, but at the same time, like, the show just turns into a fucking mess. Just like another. <laughs> it's just, like, it's hard to take anything seriously after a certain point. And it's just kind of, like, wa wondering how it's going to end. And it's like, yeah. Can, can you just... You should make more shows like Shirobako, less like another. So uh. <laughs> just 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 be done with the horror shows or a second season of Prison School. That'd be cool, too. We, we can just oh, get yeah. that instead. Um, there was also Kiznaiver, which um, somewhat divided opinions on. I liked it for the most part. Um, they did a lot of cool stuff in the ending that I thought was neat, but they also did some stuff that was kind of lame. Um, what do you expect? <laughs> Pretty much your standard fare, really. Um, yeah. 
I really liked episode nine. It was the perfect climax sort of episode where like everything that was being established ahead of time came to a head and it just kind of like erupted and like the character conflicts just all clashed against each other. So I really liked that episode. I think it was episode nine. So that was cool. Um, nice. Kumamiko was all right. It was whatever. You can watch episode three of Kumamiko and then be done with the show because it was the best episode. Cool. Or was it four? It was either three or four where like shit got really weird animation wise. and It was great. It was lots of fun. <laughs> and then after that, it was just kind of like going through the motions and it was whatever. And there was also the weird stuff. Like I was mentioning this to like you guys earlier, but like there was like weird kind of directing in the show that wasn't in the manga where it was like weirdly like kind of like sexual and abusive towards machi which was really creepy um <laughs> like there were scenes where like uh uh she goes through shit that's like almost like mental torture and like not all of it's in the manga like there's there's one scene especially where like she's trying on a bunch of different outfits for like some contest thing or whatever and like at one point like yoshio actually like tries to change her at one point and it's like really weird and uncomfortable and, like, it just kind of gets hand-waved away, but it, like, wasn't in the manga in the first place. And it was, like, a lot of those original bits that get added in that are, like, really weird and, are, like, kind of uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. And then, obviously, everyone knows that Kumiko ended with, like, a real downer episode where I was like, hey, you know that character arc we were potentially establishing? Fuck that. So <laughs> they just kind of threw all of that out the window. Um, there, was okay. also, there was also Joker Game. I liked it. I think I like Joker Game more than most people. A lot of people were just like, it didn't go anywhere. But I already figured from the beginning episode the Joker Game was going to be largely like an episode by episode kind of show where it was just each spy doing their own thing and a different thing each yeah. episode. So I guess I kind of liked it more because I knew what to expect. So uh, yeah. that was fun. Some episodes are stronger than others, but that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to like episode standalone kind of stories being told like this. Some, some episodes are just going to be better than others. Um... Assassination Classroom, second season of it. I liked a lot. Um, Assassination Classroom's general been kind of interesting. I remember the first season, I was kind of interested in it. It wasn't like, I wasn't completely sold on it. It was just kind of like enjoyable enough that I watched it. It got to a point where I was like halfway through the season and I kind of like fell off. And then I kind of marathoned the rest of the show to catch up for the second season. Um, and it's, Assassination Classroom's the show that you like more the more you watch of it. It, it gives yeah. you... It's, I guess it's not like a coincidence that it's either 50 or 52 episodes or something total when you combine all the seasons or both seasons, because uh, it really does take the time to establish it. There are some characters in the classroom that get sidelined. There's like 22 kids in the class. Some of them do get sidelined, but a lot of them do get time to shine. You learn a lot about them, which comes to a head, especially in the second season and like the finale and everything that happens, which was pretty good payoff. So it's, it's that. And also it was great hearing Jun Fukuyama as the teacher. Like yeah. it's, it's been yeah, a while since Jun good. Fukuyama did a fun role, like zero from Code Geass, which obviously a very different character, but <laughs> the same kind of like fun hamming it up kind of character. Like it's been a while since he's gotten to do something like that. And uh, like, obviously he does like really, really hammy characters in some shows, but it's not quite the same as like the like main character kind of hammy. So mm -hmm. it, it was really great to hear him in Assassination Classroom. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm really curious. I know in Sassanese Classrooms we get an English dub. I need to check out who does the English dub for the, the teacher. It would be interesting uh, to hear Sunny what they did Strait, for that. I think it is. Who? Uh, Sunny Strait? I think that's the hmm. name. Yeah, yeah, I need to check did, out the he dub. He voiced Krillin before. <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to check out the dub and see how that sounds. Uh, but yeah, Joe Fugiyama is great as the teacher. I loved him a lot. Um, pretty much a perfect casting choice. Kind of like with, um... Hane Natsuki as, as uh, Kaneki in Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah. It was uh, a similar cool. kind of like, they could not have picked a better choice. Um, nice. And Happy was fun. It was a largely comedy show. The first two episodes are like, all right, there's a decent chuckle in a couple. And then the third one's probably the best episode where it's like really funny where they play this board game and weird shit happens. And then from then on, it's basically just like a bunch of silly antics with like your humor may vary per episode kind of deal. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It, it's not the greatest show ever. It's hard to I mean it's a comedy. What do you expect? But it was entertaining enough that I watched the entire show. So, I mean, it's only 12 episodes, but uh, I watched yeah. the entire thing. It was fun. And Silverlink likes to have fun with their visuals at times. So that was cool. Um, and then the last show was Flying Witch, which I liked more than the usual. Not a whole lot of uh, happened shows because those shows are usually a bunch of like 12 year old girls and I don't care about 12 year old girls. Mm -hmm. So it's like inherently uninteresting wow. to me because it's Same. largely based in like the schools and them doing shit. 
Whereas this is yeah. young adults for the most part. I mean, there's still a little girl character, which I wish they'd focused on a little less, but the times they did <laughs> focus on her worked pretty well. So it's, but for the most part, it's young adults like are the main characters and they just kind of like, you know, walk around and they do silly stuff like witch things. And it was charming and fun. Nice. So uh, it worked pretty well. But uh, that's what I watched that ended this season. So just quick thoughts on those. Yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up, really. I, I, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I ain't got nothing. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't watch anything else. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny, like, I, I rewatched like, two seasons of Code Geass, like, over a week or something like that. Yeah. It's easy and, to like, watch shows I'm you not... like, though. Like, yeah. like when I do yeah. my rewatches of Shanna, like, it's super easy for me to watch a man. Like, when you watch shows that you know are great... Like you just, yeah. it's so easy to watch them. Yeah, no, it it, it kind of like you're also waiting for like those moments that come along that like there's like oh his next episode's this happening oh well I gotta watch that so like that kind of like helps as well whereas like it that you don't get that with airing shows as well which mm -hmm. is kind of a shame you, but you know whatever. Yeah, and you spend so long with airing shows it's easy to fall off with them too where it's kind of like the um. You have to wait a week each time, and sometimes, like, your interest in a show will wane over the course of a week, so you don't watch the newest episode, and then yeah. before you know it, another episode's out for it, and then it just starts stockpiling, and then you just yeah. aren't watching it anymore. That's that's exactly it. Yeah, it's, it's just... Uh, it's a hassle. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'll do it for this recording. So, yeah. um... That was, that was fun. A bit of a different episode, so uh, hopefully Little. people like that. <laughs> hopefully maybe hopefully. they hate it who fucking knows <laughs> everyone hates us yeah. yeah but uh next week uh we'll probably be back with covering shows um we'll have to figure out what we're covering we'll have to choose our dark horses oh, shit, obviously yeah. we'll have to choose our dark horses but then we also need to figure out how many primary shows we're covering because re-zero re-zero is carrying over so if we pick up two main shows and then also have our dark horses that's five shows total so it's an extra show We'd be covering this season, and I need to make sure Lewis can handle that. So I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> so we'll we'll talk it over as far as the shows are going, and we'll see how that goes. But we'll definitely each pick a dark horse. I don't know which one I'm picking yet. I need a couple more shows to air and watch those before I can decide. Finally, um, I'm it watching, yeah. seems like the primary shows we'll cover will be Mob Psycho 100 and Orange. Those seem like they're getting the most attention this season. So mm -hmm. if we cover two primary shows, those will be it. Um. Both, well, actually, Mob Psycho 100 hasn't aired yet, so I don't know about that, but everyone's excited because same all through One Punch Man, so fun stuff. Um, nice. But uh, I watched the first episode of Orange, and that was pretty good, so I would actually be, uh, I'm really excited to watch more of that, so I'm glad that that's getting Ooh. positive reception. Um, but yeah, like the Dark Horses, we'll have to figure that out, so. Uh, well, I'm probably going to end up picking, what is that called, a show called Musugaku and HH, just because. The Smut Show? The anime titty show. The anime titty show. You're really going to make us cover that each week. We're literally just going to cover it each week by saying tits and that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds great, man. Because, like, the thing is, though, we need a little bit. Because, like, we need that sort of carbonary back. We need that carbonary to, to be the kind of, like, you know, just to purposely shit on a show. I don't think we're going to get that from those two shows or anything that you're going to pick. So I'm going to, like, take one for the fucking team here and just pick the anime titty show. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to dissect that. We're going to, we're going to like, just be all fucking anime cynical bitches all over it. And it's going to be fucking amazing. So I'm expecting all my thank you letters in the mail. Uh, in the next week or so, because I am single-handedly saving this place by bringing in anime titty. But Masogaku and covering that's not the same as Kabaneri. Like, Kabaneri is, like, a disappointment, so it was fun to cover all of, like, the negatives in a show that everyone expected to be good. What's the fun in covering a show no one expects anything from? I'm saying everyone expects... See, here's the thing, though. It could actually be good. You never know. Like I, we could all just like look at it and just be like, you know, <laughs> anime boobs. It's got a lot of titty, a lot of butt. It's by the same. I think it's by the same author, Shimai Madden, uh, probably. But like, you know, 
I'm just saying it's a it's an example that we could probably use. If not, then well, I I'm going to pick a bad show no matter what, anyways. So you know, you picked Re Zero last season. Yeah, but like, that's because we had Carbonari. I'm picking a bad show because it's just like we need a bad show to watch. Well, we didn't cause... we didn't hate Kabaneri at first though. Well, yeah, but then like we did. So and that was great. It's not like you it's not like you knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm just saying that like, you know, having a bad show to talk about is is beneficial. Because if we're all just like, oh happy go lucky, anime is fucking amazing guys People might get tired of our, of, our, of, our, of our little shtick here, you know? So, like, we gotta, we gotta like, you know, sh- purposely shit on a show here. Like, I'm not saying we go, you know, full-on anime cynic all over it. But, like, I'm just saying we can have something bad. Something. Not, not even bad. Just, just, just mediocre, like. Not, 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 not saying, like, we just go full-on, like. I'm just saying, like, you know mediocre smut anime titties you know that might that might be just the thing this show needs you know we could definitely make better choices than masogaku and to shit on if that's really what you're looking for like what's what's the fun in like going looking at the anime titty show and being like oh it sucks who fucking saw that coming Ooh, <laughs> aren't we just the best we analyze the shit out of that ah <laughs> uh. How about we we look for all the positives in it, huh? How about that? We we like sit down, watch, consume what we're getting each week, and we go like, "Hey man, that fight was actually pretty cool to watch." Like it, it's just like just a little see. How about we make this a full on positive? Like, um, turn this around. You we we take that we take that shitty titty show and we just we give it a light which it deserves we give it that light that it needs everyone's gonna look at masogaku and hh and be like oh yeah no that's a titty 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 anime titty show but then people will come to us and be like wow lewis ryoga you guys are right this show is more than just anime titty That'll do it for this week. Lewis and I have some talking oh, wow. to do. Wow. So okay. okay. That'll uh that'll do it. Do you have any closing comments, Lewis? How about we let some viewers decide? Huh? I say like, you know, some people will like hear us out. Some people will, will hear us out. So, you know, it's a probability that like, you know, people will be interested in to see our anical, you know, analysis of... Okay, good closing comments, Lewis. That'll do it for this week. So, uh, see you guys next week. Bye-bye, people. Love you. How's it going, Lewis? Yeah.